The first Republican debate is right around the corner, and tonight Miami's Mayor Francis Suarez is holding out hope that he will be on that debate stage Wednesday night. But for those who are wondering who is Francis Suarez, we sat down with him to learn more about the candidate. It's a first glimpse of a series we're bringing back that ABC News legends Peter Jennings and Charlie Gibson first brought us, sitting down with candidates vying to become the next president of the United States. Political questions are off the table. We're learning about the people behind the politicians. In a few words, who is Francis Suarez? I'm the, the son of uh, two Cuban exiles. My parents came to this country seeking freedom um, and opportunity. An heir to a political dynasty, Francis Suarez is a self-described family man who says he's a perfect blend of both of his parents. Tell us about Rita and Xavier Suarez. Incredibly different people. My dad is, is what I would call an IQ genius. He's the ninth of 14 children. He got two graduate degrees from Harvard. He was on a full scholarship in high school. Didn't speak any English at 12 and learned how to speak English. My mother is literally the life of the party. Mm -hmm. uh, she walks into a room, everybody lights up, a lot like my wife. It knows everyone's name. She's an incredible dancer, uh, great personality, and you are impacted by her. When the night's over, she's the one person that you remember. And so I like to think that I'm the combination of those two mega personalities. Francis was born into politics. A mic and podium were commonplace, even as a toddler. So when you were just two years old, you were already stumping for dad. Vote por papi, por favor. Curious how early on being involved in politics, how that ultimately shaped you. I would say there were, uh, just like every political career, as you can imagine, there are moments where you love it and you love the ability to impact people's lives in a positive manner. And there are moments where you think to yourself, this is crazy. Why would anybody get involved in this? For at least three young Miami residents, there's no pronunciation problem at all. They call the new mayor dad. From a kid campaigning for his dad, he's now a husband to Gloria, his wife of 16 years and father to two children of his own. There was a, a Miami Herald article back in 1985. The subheading was something to the effect of your dad had just won and it said, you know, he goes from playing stickball with his son to politics on Saturday. And there was a quote from you, I believe you were eight years old and you said something to the effect of, you know, I'm happy because he's happy, but I'm sad because I don't get to spend as much time yeah. with him. So now that you're yeah. really in the same position, you have a nine-year-old son, you were eight at the time when your dad was, was mayor, how did that impact you as a dad? It definitely impacts me because I remember what those years were like. You know, I'm very conscientious of how my career and my political career impacts both my son and my daughter. My daughter does not feel like she had a large enough role in the last. So we're, so we're going to expand her role a little bit. I thought my dad did a phenomenal job. He would come home and now I, I look back and I see how tough it must have been for him. And he would come home after a long day's work and I'd be playing basketball outside and he would play basketball with me for an hour, two hours. And at the time it didn't seem like he was doing anything extraordinary, but now I, I see how, how, how much of a sacrifice it was. He must have been exhausted. You get home, you see your son playing and to be there for another hour or two, I mean, it's, it takes a lot of energy. I often say that if I can be half as good a dad as my dad has been to me, to my son, I'll be very, very happy. Growing up as a child, what did you think you wanted to be? I think I wanted to be an NBA basketball player, <laughs> <laughs> which at 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 was not going to happen. He ultimately decided to follow in his father's footsteps, but his first run for mayor in 2013 was cut short. Suarez ultimately decided to bow out of the race. The week that we found out we were pregnant, we had had like a misstep in the campaign. It just became apparent that the race that I was in, the only path to victory was to be negative and nasty, and it's not who I am. Um, it's not how I want it to be defined. And uh, I just thought that it would create potential stresses on her. And if, God forbid, uh, something were to happen to the baby, it would be something that I would feel responsible for. Um, so I, I decided, we decided together that it was better for us to wait for another opportunity. When he ran again in 2017, Suarez captured 85% of the vote. He even campaigned during Hurricane Irma. Now he's hoping to take the whole country by storm. Do you remember the particular moment when you said, I think I want to run for president of the United States? I don't think it came down to one moment. I think for me it was gradual. It was more like I was president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors 
traveling across the country and across the world, meeting with world leaders, and thinking to myself, do I have the qualities that a good president needs to have? And when I thought about sort of what are the dynamics, you know, being generational, um, you know, being from a minority, being Hispanic, uh, being someone that has a positive message and a track record of success, when I put those things together, I found that there was only one person that fit that criteria. And I felt a sense, a deep sense of obligation to this country that has given me everything, given my parents everything, um, and given my community so much. And so, you know, after much thought, much deliberation, um, decided to run for president. Is there a road that you didn't take that you could have? Not saying you should have, but just, you know, if 100%. you hadn't have been a lawyer, you hadn't have been a politician, what would it be? I would have definitely been a Navy SEAL. 100%. That's my road. Is is uh, I would have loved to have um, been in, in in the Navy SEALs. I think their training, um, their discipline, uh, their fitness, their mental toughness, uh, and of course, uh, defending our country and sacrificing, you know, potentially making the ultimate sacrifice in defense of our country, um, to me is, is, is an incredibly honorable uh, existence. What do you think is your greatest strength? I think my greatest strength is my ability to bring people together. I think it's my personality. I think it's my ability to connect uh, with people. What would you say is your biggest weakness? You know, I, I would say looking back in my life, I would say that, you know, maybe I could have academically excelled more. That's not stopping him from trying to achieve what's never been done in American history, to become the first mayor to make it directly from City Hall to the White House. Why are you Republican? I'm Republican and I've always been Republican since I was 18 years old um, because I believe in limited government. I believe in uh, traditional family values. I'm uh, Catholic. Um, I believe in um, a strong national defense. Uh, things that I think are traditional Republican values. Um, but I also think we live in a world where everybody wants to label everybody. You're Republican, you're Democrat. And I think part of our problem in today's modern day is we spend 80% of the time focusing on the 20% of the things that we disagree on instead of 80% of the time focusing on the 80% of things that we agree on. Our thanks to Francis Suarez for the conversation and more of our new series, Who Is, right after Labor Day. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.